During the hot summer months, it can be a struggle to collect enough rainwater to water my plants. I try to rely solely on my rain barrel system, but during dry spells, I found myself constantly having to reconnect my garden's water supply line to my home's water source. I do plan to increase my water collection system down the road, but for now, I decided to look for a simpler backup solution, and I think I found it. So come along with me as I show you how I remotely refill my rain barrels from anywhere in the world using my home's water supply line and a few cheap devices. <laughs> To provide support for some of the PVC piping I'll be installing later in the video, I decided to use a long piece of wood. Depending on your application, this part may or may not be necessary. I made sure my wooden vertical support was plumb before fastening it to my wood holder above. I ended up using a leftover L bracket from another project, but again, depending on your application, you may not need this. Since I didn't want to insert any holes into my house to hold the bottom portion of the wood in place, I used a concrete block for the time being. I then took a rough measurement to start working on my PVC piping that would be used to route the water from my spigot to my rain barrels. Also, all the parts and the main tools I use in this video, I will leave a link to in the description below. I use OD single step PVC cement to connect all my PVC components and also know that I applied PVC cement to all my PVC components at some point in the project. So if you don't see me doing so in this video, just know I either did it off camera or came back and did it later in the project. To ease the process of draining the water out of my PVC pipe during the winter months, I installed a T-fitting and ball valve. Since I wanted to connect a garden hose to the system, I installed a male hose thread fitting onto the PVC pipe. I decided to install a union fitting so that I could easily disconnect the motorized ball valve that I'll be installing shortly. Here's the 12 volt motorized ball valve I was referring to earlier. What's great about this device is that it will automatically close when there's no power connected and it requires very little power to operate. Here's a quick demo for how it works when power is applied. Before installing the valve, I figured it would be a good time to go ahead and install my two pin cable, which will allow me to quickly disconnect the valve from my electrical system if needed. This was also my first time using vice grip wire strippers, and I must say they made the electrical work for this project much easier, but you can also use basic wire strippers to get the job done. Once my wires were stripped, I used heat shrink butt connectors to connect the wires together. This was also my first time using a ratcheting crimping tool, and just like the wire strippers, I would highly recommend them. But again, you can get the job done with a cheaper crimping tool.
After the butt connectors were installed, I used a heat gun to activate the heat shrink material. You can also use a lighter if you don't have a heat gun. I added additional heat shrink tubing over both connectors to help strengthen the connection. Once the electrical connections were done, I worked on the PVC connections that would screw into the motorized valve. I placed Teflon tape around the male threads of the PVC fittings to help prevent any water leaks. When placing the Teflon tape around the threads, make sure you tightly wrap the tape in a clockwise direction. I usually make at least two to three full passes around the threads. When screwing the PVC fitting into the motorized ball valve to avoid unwanted stress, I usually hand tighten the components so that it is hand tight and then I use straight jaw pliers or a crescent wrench to tighten the fitting an additional half inch. I next installed the other end of the union fitting onto the PVC pipe connected to the valve. Since the path to my spigot curves a little, I figured it would be easier to make a flexible connection using an old garden hose and a female hose mender. To ease inserting the female mender into the garden hose, it was recommended to use hand or dish soap. After the garden hose was installed, I marked where the new water inlet hole needed to be placed. I used a 4 inch hole saw to cut out the hole just in case my mark was slightly off center. Using 60 grit sandpaper, I removed any small burrs or rough edges from the cutout. To help prevent insects from entering through the hole, I used some window aluminum screen material. I also used this material since it would not rust and should be stronger and more durable than some of the other options. To hold the aluminum screen in place, I drilled out four holes and used stainless steel screws, nuts, and fender washers. Off camera, I did add some silicone sealant around the edge of the hole I cut out to help aid in preventing smaller insects from entering the barrel. After the inlet hole was done, I marked where the float switch would be installed. I decided to install a float switch so that I would have a secondary way to automatically close the motorized ball valve when the barrels were filled. Using a stealth bit, I drilled out a hole for the waterproof cable gland that will help hold the float switch cable in place. I used the same type of float switch I used in my first rain barrel. For those new to float switches, if you listen closely, you can hear the mechanical component inside the float switch as it rotates. I used a flathead screwdriver to expand the cord grip to make the process easier for inserting the float switch cable.
Once the core grip was roughly in place, I then installed the counterweight which will help the float switch operate correctly and keep the float switch vertical when the rain barrel is filled. Since I may have to adjust the position of the cord grip and counterweight once I finalize everything, I didn't fully connect the two together. This is something I did later off camera. Here you can see how when I tighten the cable gland, the inside wraps itself around the cable which will help keep the float switch locked to a certain depth. Using a leftover junction box from a previous project, I began to modify it so I would have a local box close to the motorized valve and float switch to house the electrical connections. Once the junction box was installed, I inserted a two pin mail cable to ease the process of quickly disconnecting my valve from the system if I ever needed to troubleshoot anything. I then routed my float switch cable into the junction box. I'll be cutting the excess wiring later in the video. To keep the cable somewhat organized, I installed cable clamps. For the power source connection, I used another two pin mail cable that will connect to an extension cable routed to my electrical tote. To connect the extension cable to the electrical tote, I installed a two pin female cable. I then worked on the smart Wi-Fi relay switch that will control the motorized ball valve. Setting up this Wi-Fi switch is quite straightforward, and if you're new to these types of switches, there will be a link in the description to a video where I go into much more detail about setting it up. Once I was done setting up the smart Wi-Fi switch, I verified I could turn the switch on and off with my smartphone. This particular Wi-Fi switch model also comes with a remote. I doubt I'll ever use the RF remote, but I went ahead and set it up anyway. Once the Wi-Fi switch was set up, I attached plastic feet to the circuit board so I could install the switch in my electrical tote. Before moving forward with the electrical work, I disconnected my electrical power sources. Also, if you're new to electrical work, consult with a certified electrician before getting started. Now, there's a lot going on in this electrical tote because of all the other projects that have taken place up to this point. So to make this easier for anyone following along, I spent some time creating an extremely easy to follow electrical diagram that will only show the wiring and components necessary for this project. I will leave a link to that diagram in the description below. To improve the radio frequency range, I extended the antenna on the smart Wi-Fi board. Before connecting the motorized valve and the float switch to the circuit, I temporarily disconnected the incoming power going to my junction box. Also, the electrical connections I'm making in this junction box will also be included in the electrical diagram found in the description below. Thank you. 
Once all the electrical connections were made, I turned on the water supply to check for any water leaks. Everything looked good, so I began to test the system. I first used the remote to open the motorized valve. I was glad to see so far everything appeared to be working correctly. I next made sure I could close the valve using the remote. After that test passed, I verified that my smartphone could open and close the valve. Next I wanted to make sure if for some reason I got distracted and forgot to close the valve, my float switch would automatically turn off the valve once the rain barrels were filled. When winter rolled around, I wanted to make sure my manual ball valve would release any remaining water within the PVC pipe to prevent any of my piping from bursting. After everything was finalized and checked, I liked that everything worked as intended, which is not always the case. There are definitely other solutions out there that could have solved this problem, but in the short term, I really like that my solution is tied to my solar system, can be controlled remotely, and gave me the opportunity to learn more about motorized ball valves. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please be sure to click the like button to encourage YouTube to share this video with others. I'd also like to thank the following people for signing up to become a supporter of Green Tech Town as your support is greatly appreciated and helps to keep this channel going. Anyway, that's all for now, so I'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.